Our gospel passage for today comes from the Gospel of John. In this we see as the disciples and first the women and then later the disciples come to the tomb to see Jesus. I want you to listen closely to see, is there yet belief? Even in that Easter morning, is there yet belief? And when does belief really happen? Here now is the word of God. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and he looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived, and he went into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there as well as the burial cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first, he also went and saw it. He saw it, believed. They did not yet understand from the scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken away my Lord, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned towards him and cried out in Aramaic, Ramon, which means teacher. Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. <coughs> Let us stand and join together in song. Good Christian and all, rejoice and sing. Hey, number 111.
Let us pray. Dear Lord, I ask that you would be with me, that the words that I bring and the thoughts that I share, that they would be your words, your thoughts, that which isn't for you may quickly, quickly be forgotten, but that which comes from you may be a help to us, place it in our hearts, and would guide us in our journey and give us confidence for our days ahead. For Lord, you made our ears, you made our hearts, you can bring this to pass. We ask this in the name of your Son. Amen. Isn't it hard to believe that someone has risen from the dead? It's always been hard to believe that someone could be raised from the dead. On this Easter morning, though, we Christians affirm that Jesus has been raised from the dead. So we as a people say that we believe but it must be a little bit hard to say it. Or we do it a little tongue-in-cheek. Or we do it quickly. Quickly. Just say it. Because we know it's the right answer. It's sort of like when I ask the children at the times in the morning. And I say, okay, what's going on here? And one of them will always sit there from time to time. One of them will always just go, Jesus, the church, God, Holy Spirit. Just trying to find the answer. One of those has to be right. And if I don't say the right answer, I'm good. It's sort of what we do. Yes, Jesus was raised from the dead. Yes, Jesus reigns in trial. Yes, we will all be raised. And then we live like, but it really never happened. We remain very much a people that can't see miracles. Do not expect miracles. And if someone talks to us about a miracle, someone being raised from the dead, that we could be born again, that we too have a Father who will raise us from the dead without our power to do it, just like Jesus, who without any power, who was already dead, couldn't do anything about it, God raised him up, and Jesus, all of this was done so that we would believe we don't live like that. We live with fear, deep fear. Dare I try something? Dare we stand up for something? Dare we go down this road? Death causes us all so much fear. We must understand that it has always been, as I said earlier, always hard to believe that someone can be raised from the dead. See, there are very, there are in any belief system, there are certain grades of belief. Belief about things that we have a good feeling about. We lean a bit more towards that. Grades of uh, belief about things we don't feel so good about. Mm. It's like the Cub fans that when I was in Chicago, they, they would tell you always at the start of the year, oh, I believe the Cubs can win it all. But of course, a long history has taught them yeah, yeah, that can happen, and pigs can fly. <laughs> if God wills them. <laughs> it's that sort of attitude, and they go through life very much without a whole lot of a belief like, oh, we can do this. Now, you talk to Steeler fans around here. Can the Steelers win the Super Bowl? And they are always thinking they're gone. I mean, they have a belief, and the belief is like almost coming to fruit before them. They're very excited about it. We see various grades of belief for everyone. The Easter account is one that calls us to our great step of faith. Great step of faith. 